Standing here with a couple gold glovers, we got Ian Happ here and we got Cody Bellinger. We're gonna talk uh, outfield today. Back goes Bellinger to the track. He leaps and makes the ground. Coming from Dodger Stadium, coming over here, what part of your game are you gonna change, if any? Yeah, I think uh, there's some similarities in the, in the, in the uh, stadiums where Dodger Stadium and Wrigley Field, the dimensions are pretty even. And um, so for me, I, it, not playing there too much, it, we usually, I usually played it the same. So you play, when watching and playing against you, you, you played a little deeper, right? Right. But you, you go back on balls really well. Smack to the line, center field. Bellinger runs it down. At Wrigley Field, you don't have that much room to go back. So right. you think you're going to play shallower, you're going to play? I think I'm going to play shallower, knowing that my strength is going back on balls. Right. I'm um, just kind of let the speed and athleticism uh, take over a little bit. I will definitely be shallower. Though. Okay, let's throw some balls. We'll throw you some balls and just, just let's just talk about you know your footwork because that's the start of it, right? Yeah, for me, just all about like the pre-pitch, and then naturally you just kind of read where the ball's going to be. The important thing is the first step. Right. Whether you're going left or whether you're going right, I think that first move is real important. Ooh, you're an love athlete. That. All right, love that. that that'll, that'll play. That'll that play at Wrigley. No, but what, what I love, what I love to see is his hips. So when he came in, he came just like this, and it was more of a, a hip swivel than a drop step. You know, back in the day, it was like, hey, we're coming in, and me and Ian were just talking about this, and it was the drop step. But what does that yeah. do? Yeah, we kind of feel stagnant a little bit. I was just telling him, for me being out in center field, I just like to feel athletic. Uh, Pre-pitch routine or whatever it is, you know, an athletic position, and then if the ball's going back, it's all about that first, that first step going back. Sun ball. When I was when I'll I was transitioning from infield to outfield, that was the big thing was working on the drop step, and I always felt like I never got open enough, right? And I would end up taking a route that was too shallow, right? right. And so that was a big thing for me, changing that I would, I would drop, and then I'd be able to get going. And you can always come back. And you, you can always come more shallow. Right. But if the ball gets over your head and you're starting to go this way, absolutely, you then, you, you're, then you're in angles, trouble, right? Yeah. And it's different because the angles are different, right? So you're like the center field is like boom, boom. And you I went from right to, I went from right to center, right, so that right. was a little bit different for me. Absolutely. Or right field, you kind of have, in my opinion, like one angle in a way to like throw to bases where center field is. Different, because you know you got to cover the left center and the Absolutely. right center gap. The footwork has to be a little. Your hips got to be your like your movements have to be a little bit more crisp. So even pre-pitch, they had me in right field, and they had me open up a little bit, right? Yeah. Do you? Do you, do you well, do that I remember all? watching Adam Duvall do it. Yeah. Remember Duvall would sometimes be like completely sideways. Right. Like that. But I I try to do it where, if it's a left-handed hitter, and I know that it's he's probably going to hit a ball that's tailing towards the line. I'm thinking more about going this right. way. Left field towards the corner, Hap. Oh my goodness, what a catch. Ian Hap up against the wall, what a play. And then if it's a right-handed hitter, then I know if he hits the ball down the line, it's probably gonna be hit really hard and hook. Right, right, I don't right. really have a chance over there. Absolutely. So I'm kind of cheating, just, just thinking about heading to left center. No, I love that, I love that. And any time you're obviously at Wrigley, the wind's blowing, let's talk about that. So hitting wise, you're not gonna hit too many balls out. So guys, so that's gonna affect your defense, correct? Right. Yeah, I mean, I was kinda chatting with Ian just a little bit about it. What I like to do on windy days, like in a stadium, they might say it's blowing out, right? but right. In the, on the grass and everything's blowing in. Right. So it's hard to, if you just go by the flags, you know, you gotta like do your own little test. At, at Wrigley, the ones that I trust, are the center field ones yeah. above the Absolutely. above the know, flags? Yeah. There's right. some flags to yeah. trust. Right. right. Oh, there's you gotta find the flags to trust. Yeah, you'll realize the the you'll go out and you'll be like, oh, this is a great day to hit, but it's a terrible day to put out there. <laughs> you might as well just play right. on, you might as well play on the track because every ball that's popped up is gonna be either the balls that are right over, you know, over shortstop or second base. They're gonna go. They're gonna be routine right. fly balls, and the other ones are homers, and you gotta worry about it. Yeah. But then the other ones you'll love because you'll be playing shallow. They'll crush balls, and you'll be running right under them. What, what was your toughest wind at Wrigley? 
the toughest win at Wrigley probably was I for me it was the it was, it was the one that was blown out the, blown out because the balls when it's blown out really hard the balls that you think are routine fly balls they carry an extra 20 exactly feet. so you're sitting there and you're like oh I got it I got it and you're like oh 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 right and then you're close and then you're to at the wall. wall. They're close to the brick wall. To the brick wall, so yeah. yeah wait, <laughs> right. Wait, you know what? That ivy ain't protected. Absolutely, absolutely. It has a little bit of padding, but you'll get stuck in there a few times and just don't try to roll off of it. But this has been great. It's a great talk, man. And, and, and yeah, they're lucky to have y'all two out here, man, because y'all cover a lot of ground and they, they, they do this. They do this for, for a reason. Right. These dudes are really good.